Steve Bannon's fate is now in the hands of Attorney General Merrick Garland as he considers whether to proceed with criminal contempt charges against Bannon for defying a subpoena from the January 6th Select Committee. Nine House Republicans voted with all 220 Democrats in support of this move, this despite continued attempts by other Republican members to downplay the investigation. We know what this is really about. This is about getting at President Trump. Because they can't build back better, they've just decided to build back meaner. The select committee despises Steve Bannon's politics, so they're abusing their power to put him in jail. Joining me now is former Republican Congressman and former presidential candidate Joe Walsh and Alyssa Farah. She was the former, she is the former White House Communications Director for President Trump. Thank you so much to both of you for being here today. Um, to you first, Joe, I mean, nine Republicans, that's significant, but that's not many. Oh, that's, Brianna, respectfully, that's nothing. I, I uh, and I was thinking last night, I was a Republican for my whole adult life. I left the party 20 months ago. The party no longer believes in truth, no longer believes in democracy. And yesterday, they just reaffirmed that they no longer believe in the rule of law. That's all this was. It wasn't about Bannon. Our government was attacked. Uh, Bannon was given a lawful subpoena. He defied it. Um, but over 200 Republicans said they don't care. But like Matt Gates is saying, this is mean. That's his defense. This is mean. Well, in the, the House Republicans essentially forfeited their right to oversight going forward. They're saying enforcing subpoenas just doesn't matter and holding people in contempt just doesn't matter. But the funny thing that your viewers should know is most House Republicans actually hate Steve Bannon. They just live in perpetual fear of him going after them on, their, on his podcast or his various different outlets. He's going to actually continue to be a thorn in the side of them going forward, which is funny. You know, if I were a Kevin McCarthy, I'd be worried about him trying to have somebody challenge me in leadership when Republicans take back the House. So I'm a little bit surprised to see them just so lining up behind him. It, it's a very interesting point that you make. Now, Jim Banks, who was the last Republican that we heard in that sort of montage of Republicans whitewashing what happened, um, Kevin McCarthy wanted him on the Oversight Committee. When he had five picks, he picked Jim Banks, but Nancy Pelosi said no. I mean, Jim Banks is a coup enabler. That was why she said no. He would have been the ranking member if she had not rejected him on those grounds. And what we have now learned is that Jim Banks has been sending letters to government agencies asking for documents that are going to the January 6th committee and signing them as the ranking member. I mean, I might start signing things as the Queen of England. <laughs> <laughs> Brianna, it's uh, I mean, it pains me. This is a party that lives in an alternative reality. You are correct. Um, they don't give a damn about Bannon. But Bannon is where the base is. I mean, tens of millions of people listen to him every day. Uh, these Republicans are afraid of the base. They're afraid of the base. But what do you make of, of a Jim Banks pretending to be on the committee? Or saying, he did say in it, look, I'm not in the role that I should be in. But then he signs it as if he's this shadow committee and he needs to be looped in on all of these documents. What do you think? You know, it's like, uh, it's, I, I, I'm always reminded, Trump's like the most dishonest person who's ever lived. But, and he's enabled these other Republicans to lie and to fudge and to commit fraud and to cheat. And, and for banks to just put out dishonest stuff like that, Brianna, it's part and parcel. It goes to your point that they've forfeit, forfeited oversight. But here he is attempting to have it. Right. And the, it was always a strategic error by Republicans to not sit some of the members other than Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. I think it would have actually been good if this had been a truly bipartisan, you know, fully staffed by Republican and Democrat members. But they forfeited that right. So to now then be trying to get documents as the faux ranking member makes no sense. Liz Cheney is the ranking member. Let's talk now about Texas, where the governor has appointed as secretary of state a lawyer, John Scott, who briefly repped Donald Trump's interests in challenging the results in Pennsylvania. And, you know, it seems like this is all being put in place, this continued effort to change the outcome of an election. And I wonder if Democrats and even Republicans opposed to it really are noticing or doing what they need to do. Well, and it's more widespread than just Texas. So you've got uh, Jody Heiss challenging the sitting Georgia Secretary of State as well. This is a concerted effort by Trump world to try to get loyalists into Secretary of State roles 
in states across the country for I, presumably exactly what you're saying, which is to challenge results of future elections. And I, I, I've, I, I've said this recently, you know, this is not just about 2024 in the next presidential race. We need to watch Senate races as well. And the Trump aligned ca candidates, are they going to concede if they lose? Or are they going to draw these things out, try to challenge them in court, try to go to loyalist secretaries of state? This is the consequences of when we just do not let our institutions hold and we try to challenge the basic facts of elections. And we're seeing it across the country right now. There will be more than Texas. There'll be more than Georgia. Brianna, to answer your question, no, no. <laughs> the Democrats don't understand what Republicans are doing right now. This, this is scary. This is the bigger concern. I know everybody's talking about access to the vote. I think Democrats and Americans are going to come out in 22 and 24 and vote no matter what Republicans try to do. But what's going on in Texas and other states is they're trying to rig how the vote is counted and who counts the vote, and how these votes and counts are certified. That's really scary, and Democrats need to pay attention. Well, that makes challenging and on the back end harder. There, there doesn't yes. seem to be, you know, the, the, the phrase about prevention, an ounce of prevention, there doesn't seem to be much prevention, right? The, this is what we all should be focused on. In every state, they're trying to rig how and who, who counts the vote, how it's counted, and whether it's certified or not. This is scary. It, it's a party, Brianna, that is anti-democracy, period. Well, well, and I would say this, you wouldn't need to do this if you thought you were running a winning presidential candidate. And this gets back to the broader point of Donald Trump lost. He could not get enough people to support him. 74 million people versus Biden's 81 million people. Why don't we just run a Republican presidential candidate who can actually get elected and actually win so we're not having to set up these faux challenges all over the country. Yeah, that seems like that an be? easy answer. Who would that be? I had Tim Scott. <laughs> it's, no, Tim Scott, you say? No one, it's Trump's party. No one's going to challenge him if he runs. It's a takeover. All right, uh, Alyssa Joe, great to see you guys this Thanks. morning. Thank you.